Hello everyone and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're in section 12 and down in module 1 and I just want to start out by just explaining to you what exactly a mail merge is so that as we go through these modules you're going to really understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish because if you've never come across it before then it might be something that's a little bit unusual to you or you might not be aware of some of the terms that we're going to use. Now what a mail merge document is, if you can imagine this scenario, maybe you have a letter that you send out every single Friday to a specific group of people. Maybe it's some kind of collections letter. And essentially, the letter is going to be the same, but there's going to be some things that are different. So, for example, the customer that you're sending it to is going to be different each time. And you want to make sure that the letter that you send out is personalized. So it's not just a standard letter they're going to get. So maybe at the top of the letter, you want it to say, Dear Claire. And then in the next letter, you want it to say, Dear Tom. And then maybe you want it to say something a little bit more personal at the bottom. Maybe you want to have different addresses on each letter. So what I'm trying to say is that the core letter itself is the same every time, but there are different things on it to personalize that letter for each customer. That is where you would use something like a mail merge. And it's really important to note that there are three steps to a mail merge, and I've just got them listed out on the screen here. The first step is you need to decide what your main document is going to be. So what do you want to merge the information into? So the example I just gave you was the example of a letter. So we could create a letter in Word and then merge our addressing and customer information into it. And I'm going to assume that if you create a letter, you're probably going to want to send that letter out, which is why we then have envelopes. We can perform mail merges on envelopes and also labels. You can perform mail merges in an email. So maybe you have an Outlook email and you want to send out the same email to 2,000 customers, but again, you just want to personalize it very slightly. So we could merge customer names into emails. And then finally, we have something called a directory, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that a bit later on, but it's basically a listing of the same information over and over again. So that's the first part. You want to select the, the main document, essentially. The second part of a mail merge is selecting your data source. So this is the information that you want to merge into your main document. So it might be a list of customer addresses or customer names or invoice numbers or all three. And you might have that data stored off in something like an Excel spreadsheet or another source. You essentially need to bring that data source into whichever document it is that you're creating. So data source is the next one that we need to be mindful of. And then the final step, the third step, is the merged document. So this is going to be the document that's presented after you've run the mail merge. And what you'll see is that each new record will be on a separate page. So say I'd selected letter and then I'd pulled in a list of my customer names from my data source. Each new page in Word will be a different letter for a different customer. So if I had 200 customer details in my data source, I would end up with a merged document that contains 200 pages. OK, so those are the three steps that you need to be made aware of. I completely understand that just kind of saying it here, it's quite hard to visualize, which is why in the next module, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And we're going to go through and create a mail merge from scratch. So please join me in the next module for that. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're in section 12, module two, where we're going to start to put together our mail merge. Now in the previous module, I introduced you to the three steps of a mail merge that you can see on the screen now. So I just very briefly just want to review those steps so that you understand. So step one is the main document. So the type of document that we're creating, so it might be a letter or an envelope, a label, an email or a directory. So again, let's use the example of we might have a letter that we need to send out every single Friday, maybe some kind of collections letter, and we need to send that out to 200 different people. So what we can do is we can create the letter in Word, we can save it off, and we can reuse that letter. 
but we're going to utilize mail merge so that the letter is personalized and each letter that's produced has different addressing or customer information in it. So it might be that on each letter we want to have a different customer name, a different customer address, maybe their invoice number, information like that. So setting up the main document is the first step. We then need to pull in all of our information. So again, in this example, it might be customer information, their addressing details from a data source. Now, a data source can be made from numerous different things. So a really common one would be to have your customer information in an Excel spreadsheet. So you can definitely attach your Excel spreadsheet to your Word document for use in your mail merge. Alternatively, you can just manually type the data that you want to use in your mail merge. And that's what we're going to actually do first. And then finally, you will end up with a merged document. So when you complete all the steps of the merge, you'll end up with 200 letters. So one for every customer and each one displaying slightly different information. So that is kind of what we're aiming for in this module and part two of this module, which we'll do next. So let's get on with creating our mail merge. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start from a blank document. Now, it's worth pointing out that you don't necessarily have to start with a blank document. So if you already have a letter created and saved off, you could just open that and then work through the steps. I'm starting from a blank, but please feel free to use a letter that you've already created. So I'm going to jump straight up to my mailings ribbon. And you'll see we have a start mail merge group and this big button just here. If I click it, you'll see there we have the five things that we've been speaking about. So letters, email, envelopes, labels and directory. So you could choose whatever it is you're creating. So in this case, we're doing a letter, so I could choose that. But what I like to do, and I would recommend this, particularly if you're new to doing mail merges, is to utilize the step-by-step -step mail merge wizard. And that will really walk you through the entire process. It's a bit of a no-brainer when it comes to putting together mail merge documents. So let's use that. And you'll see you get this little pane open at the side, which I'll make slightly bigger just there. Now at the bottom of this pane, it says step one of six. So really all you do is follow the information and walk yourself through to create your mail merge. So it's nice and simple. So the first thing it's asking me is to select my document type. So what type of document are you working on? And there I have my five options. So as I said, we're doing a letter. So I've got letter selected. And you can see underneath, it gives me a little description. So it says, send letters to a group of people. You can personalize the letter that each person receives. Click next to continue. So let's do that. At the bottom, we have next, and it tells us our next step is the starting document. So it says, how do you want to set up your letters? Do you want to use the current documents so or the blank one? Do you want to start from a template? So that might be one of your own or one that's in Word. Or do you want to start from the existing documents? So if I was to say start from existing document, I could then go and browse for a letter that I've got saved off somewhere. Now I'm going to say use current document. And I'm going to click on next at the bottom to select my recipients. Now, this is where you need to tell Word where your list of recipients is. So that would be, you know, the customer information, things like that. And again, I have a few different options. So I can say use an existing list. Now, if I had all of my data that I wanted to use in the mail merge saved off in an Excel spreadsheet, this is what I would use. I would say use an existing list, and then I would just browse for that particular file. And that will essentially kind of attach it to this mail merge. I could choose to select from Outlook contacts. So again, if I want addressing information, I could use my Outlook contacts list or I could choose to type a new list. Now, this is actually what we're going to do here. I'm going to show you how to manually type in some names. So now I've selected that. It says type the name and addresses of recipients. Now, I might use this option if it's only going to maybe four or five people, or maybe if I don't have the names saved off in some kind of spreadsheet, it's just as quick for me to type them directly in as it would be to create an Excel spreadsheet with those names in. So I'm going to select create. And this is where I can go in and start manually creating my information. Now you'll see here we have these column titles. So it says title, first name, last name, company, 
address, uh, city, state, so on and so forth. If I scroll across, there's loads of them in there. Now, these are all entirely customizable. So again, it really depends what kind of information you want to attach to this mail merge. Now, I'm going to go in. I don't want all of this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to customize these column headings. And you can see we have a customized columns button at the bottom. So this now shows me all of my current columns and I can go in and I can delete whichever ones I like. So I'm going to delete out uh, address line two. And it will always ask you when you delete field address line two, any information in this field will also be deleted. So it's kind of warning you if you already have a list of names in here that are using address line two, it's going to delete out that part of the name as well. Now I'm fine with that, so I'm going to say yes. And I'm actually going to delete everything from country or region downwards. So I'm going to say country or region, delete. And unfortunately, you can only do these individually. Like so. Now I could also rearrange my list, so move up or move down. So for example, if I had something like zip code uh, listed after last name, that's not really particularly logical as we would type the zip code right at the end. So you might want to move up or move down to rearrange your fields. I could also add my own fields into here, which I am actually going to do in this case. I'm going to add a field and it's going to be date last called. And I'm going to click on OK. And that just adds that onto the bottom. And I'm going to click on OK. And if we look now, I can scroll across and I can see, yep, those ones that I deleted have now gone and I have my date last called field on the end. So now what I can do is I can start manually adding in the details of my recipients. So I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to say Mr. I'm going to use my tab key to move across my fields. So Mr. Clive Turnbull. I'm going to leave his company field blank for the time being. He's going to be a PO box 234. He's going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina. Two nine five eight nine. And the date last called is going to be May 13th, 2019. So there's my first recipient. I'm going to add three in. So I want to add a new entry. So I have a button at the bottom that says new entry and I can go in and I can type my second recipient. So we have Miss Emma Morris and she works for Morris Associates at 345 Principal Avenue. And she is in New York. Now I've made a, an obvious mistake here. I've added New York and then NY into the same field. And that's because I want to come back and show you something related to that a bit later. So just bear with me on that one. Um, we're going to have the state. So uh, 78563. Date last called is going to be July. 2nd, 2019. I'm going to add one final new entry. I'm going to leave off the title. I'm going to say Ben Waters and he is at Chamberlain and Co. He's located at 123 Vine Street. He is in Boston, MA and the zip code 02101. And he was last called on August the 4th, 2019. Okay, so I'm just going to add those three names in and I'm going to click on OK. Now, what will pop up is a save address list box. And it doesn't matter what you do, you always must save any address list that you create. So this will pop up automatically. Now, it's defaulted to... Uh, a folder called my data sources I'm actually okay with that so I'm just going to call it my data and I'm going to click save and then it pops me up with another box that says mail merge recipients so I can see all of the people that I've added and this is actually a very useful area because it really allows you to customize what you're including in your mail merge so if you imagine if I had 200 names in here 
maybe I don't actually want to send this letter to all 200 people. So I could go through and just untick the people who I didn't want to send that letter to. So that's quite useful. You also have some options down here for refining your recipient list. So you can sort your list, you can run filters, find duplicates and remove them, all kinds of things like that. So these options are really good, particularly if you have your information in an Excel spreadsheet and you've imported it in, um, you might want to do things like remove any duplicate entries that you have. You might want to find specific recipients, all kinds of options in there that you can use. Now, I've only got three names and I'm fairly happy with this list, so I'm going to click on OK. And the next step is to write the letter. Now, before we get on to this step, there are a couple of other things that I need to do with regards to setting up this main document. So I'm going to write the letter in a moment, but I need to add a couple of things in first. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to part two of this module. So I will see you over there. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're still down in section 12 and we've moved on to module 3, which is essentially part 2 of the previous module, which we started when we were creating a mail merge document. So we're starting off at the place that we left off in the last module. So we have our mail merge wizard running down the right hand side and we're at the point now where we want to write our letter. So we've got our data list sorted out, so our customer names, those three that we typed in. And now we want to actually create the main body of this letter. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this wizard, I'm just going to click at the bottom to go on to the next step of write your letter. Now, what I want to do with this letter, what I want to have in the top is I just want to have the date. So I'm going to put August the 4th. 2019 and I'm going to hit enter. Now underneath the date I want to have the what we call the address block. So I want to have the company name and I also want to have the name of the recipient and their address. And there are a couple of different ways that I can do this and one of them is the way that I prefer. Now let me show you my non-preferred way first of all and that is by using this address block. So again over in the right hand side in our wizard we have an option for address block. Now, if we just read the text above where it says, write your letter, it says, if you have not already done so, write your letter now. To add recipient information to your letter, click a location in the document and then click one of the items below. Now, I'm going to click on address block just to show you. So what the address block essentially does is it looks at your data that you've provided it and it pulls in the name. So you can see here in the preview, currently it's saying Mr. Clive Turnbull, and then we have the addressing details. Now for Clive, I didn't have a company name set up in that original data list, which is why you can't see a company name. However, if I click the arrow to move to the next record, I can see that Emma does have a company name and that's also listed in there. And in the left hand side of this panel, I can choose how I want those names to display in which format. And I can also choose to either um, insert the company name or remove the company name, or I can insert a postal address in various different ways. Now, if that's all you want in the top of your letter, then that's absolutely fine. You can insert the address block, but I prefer to have a little bit more control over how and where these fields are placed. So I'm going to cancel out of there and I'm going to do the same thing, but in a slightly different way. I'm going to go up to the mailings tab and I'm going to go to this insert merge field drop down. And you can see there it's pulled through essentially all of my column headings, which we refer to in this context as merge fields. And I can use these throughout my letter to pull in the information in the exact location where I want it. So the way I want this letter to be set up is underneath the date, I want to have the company name. So I'm going to select the company name merge field. I'm going to hit enter to get onto the next line. And I then want it to say the customer's first name followed by their last name. And I want to make sure I put a space in there and then have their last name. I'm going to press enter. On the next line, I want to have their address. I'm going to press enter. And then I want to have the city. And I'm going to put the city, state and zip code all on one line. And I want it separated by commas. So I'm going to have the city name, comma, space, 
back to my merge fields. I'm going to say state, comma, space, and then I'm going to put in the zip code like so. And I'm going to press enter a couple of times. So that's exactly how I want it to appear in all of my letters. What I then want is to add in the main body of my letter. So what's my letter actually going to say? So I want to start it off by saying dear space. And what I want is to say dear Mr. So-and-so, dear Miss so-and-so. So I'm going to use the title merge field space last name like so. And if I want a comma, I need to put that in as well. Hit enter and then I want to type my letter. Now you could just go in and type out your letter, that's absolutely fine, but let me show you another way of doing this. If you have the text of your letter already saved off in another document, you could either go and find that document, open it and then copy and paste it in, or an even quicker way of doing it is to go to the insert ribbon. All the way over in this text group, we have an object button and you can insert text straight from a file. So I'm going to select that. You navigate to where you have your letter saved off. So mine's called the listings letter and I'm going to click insert and it's going to insert the text from that file directly to wherever I was clicked in this document. And you might want to adjust that very slightly. So there we go. So much quicker. Now, once I have my text in here, I might also want to go through and personalize this even more. So if you remember, when we set up our data list, we actually added in our own merge field. If I just remind you of that, if we go back to mailings and merge field, this is the one that we created date last called. So I now want to use this within the main body of text in my letter. So I want the letter to say since we last spoke on, and then I want to put in there, my merge field, date last called, and make sure I have a space. I might then want to personalize the letter even further by adding in their first name somewhere within the body of this text. So where it says our technical folks, I might want to click in there and just add in the first name and space. Okay, so fairly easy to utilize these individual fields. You can see how much more powerful it is just using them in that way than adding in your address blocks, so on and so forth. So now I'm fairly happy with how my letter looks. I'm going to preview my letters. So back to our wizard at the bottom, next step, preview your letters. And here we go. I'm now looking at recipient two, which is Emma. I can go to recipient three to take a look at that and I can go back through as well to check to make sure everything looks okay. Now if you remember with recipient two, Emma, I actually made a mistake when I was typing in uh, her details and I think I pointed that out to you in the previous module. So just here it's got New York, then we have NY listed twice. So what I want to do is I want to go back in and I want to change that. So it's very simple to do it. All you need to do is go back to edit recipient list and you need to go to your data source. So this has been saved as a data source down here. So I'm going to click it and say edit data source. And this is where I can then go in and I can make that change. So I'm going to go to this field. I'm just going to delete out that additional NY. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to say, do you want to save this change to your file? So I'm going to say yes and OK again. And you'll see that immediately that's updated in the preview of my letter. So looking through, I'm pretty happy. Actually, no, I'm not. I've just noticed a little error down here. So I can see here I have a double A. OK, that looks a lot better. So now I'm happy with the way my letters look, I'm going to go down to the final stage, which is complete the merge. And I'm going to get two ways that I can complete this merge. If I just want to print these letters straight to the printer, I can click print. However, what I prefer to do is I like to go to this edit individual letters option, which will open all of the letters in Word so I can have a final quick look through to make sure everything's perfect before I either save them off or choose to print them. So I'm going to say edit individual letters. I want to merge all of my records, so all three of them. And I'm going to say OK. And now what I have is a brand new document called letters two. So if I minimize this down, 
you can see I still have my main document behind. It's actually created a new document for my merged data. And this document has three pages because it contains all three of my recipients. So I have Clive at the top on the first page. I have Emma next, and then I have Ben after that. Very quickly, I've been able to just create these three letters. So you can see how quick this is, particularly if you have a lot of data that you're using. We've only used three records, but if you have 200, 500, 1,000 letters you need to send out, this is a much quicker way of doing things, because once you've set up that, those merge fields and attached the data source, you're pretty much good to go. So that's what we're going to focus on in the next module, and that is how you can use an existing data source that you have saved off in something like an Excel spreadsheet in order to create a merge document. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so that you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to get the full Microsoft Word 2019 course, including follow along exercise files, click over there and click over there to watch all the videos in this Word 2019 playlist.